So this is the re-upload version of my peer engineering CBT. So what we have here is my factory sort of. This factory sort of represents my dream occupation because I wouldn't want to work as an engineer, someone who works with machines, like a mechanic or something like that. This factory sort of represents that. This is a place where I work with machines and this is where also I put the rest of the circuits. So that sort of represents my occupation. Also, excuse me for the um, for the way I'm playing because I'm playing with one hand only. Because I have to hold the phone with one hand. As you can see, I can't move my mouse and my keyboard at the same time. I can only move the keyboard or the mouse at once. Alright, and here we are at the redstone labs. I'm gonna just go really quickly. So on these, first off, we have some um, showcasing some circuits, and then we have some uh, what's it called? Some hardware. I'm gonna show off. So first off, um, here's a brief. I'm just a briefing on this. Um, the reason why I decided to do redstone circuit is because back a while back we had circuitry or electronics. There's sort of hardware too, but I'd rather put the hardware stuff um, over there. So what this is, um, is the same thing as the breadboard circuits, because I feel like you're transporting um, power from one end to another, and there's a lot of other t um, of the same tools, like a timer, as well as something to like um, boost sort of redstone signals. So there's a lot of stuff that's um, similar to, cir to um, breadboard circuitry. So first off, we got this thing, an ore grinder. It doesn't actually work in Minecraft, sadly. However, you get the concept of it. This is done with a redstone claw. This is um, the first piece of hardware. And a very important one at that. As you can see, it pulls the signal. I'll show you guys um, what's important about that later on. During my um, history of a hardware. So here we have it, my food maker. A very useful machine. Once again, it uses a redstone clock or timer, whatever you want to call it. I guess for this one, we're gonna we're gonna just um, reload the hoppers here. <coughs> and this is um, a pretty easy circuit. There we go. Oops. Oops. Right. The cow. So all we have to do is place a um, a subject in there. Oh, it's at two actually. So two. Just to show there's nothing in here. Right, I lied. Um, a minute. Okay, there we go. There's nothing inside. So we have to do this in quick succession, like so. Like that, they drained lava. Oh, it, it meant baby cow. Alright then. I can see, cow died. That is some steak. Oh, uh, we're, we're gonna skip this um, this one here because it's pretty much a sort of simplified version of this. This is a conveyor belt that moves um, objects or animals. I decided to do animals because it's more useful. Oops. As you can see, it pushes the cow. Unfortunately, there's a clunk up there, but you get the idea. Um, I actually messed up the circuit, so that's all we're going to have to make do with for today. Once again, simplified version, don't need to go over it. Now, here we have the history of a redstone clock. Now, before, redstone clocks are very tedious. And actually, before we even get to that, um, a while back we did a uh, unit where some of us went to groups and presented the history of a certain hardware, some of us at game consoles, some CPUs, stuff like that. So I decided to do one on redstone clocks while we're here. And as you can see, a very, very tedious thing and it requires a lot of human interactions in order for it to actually work. Here we got a, a newer 
more newer version, however, still once again requiring human inter interaction. And the thing is with these um, primitive um, versions of the redstone clock is that you actually have to break the circuit and there's no way to really stop it without breaking the circuit. Once again, another primitive version, but this one is a little bit better. But also, it's also a big one because it requires this big space. Now here we got the newer version, the one which the developers actually made into the game. Which uses a comparator. Uh, yep, this thing. With a um, normal um, repeater. And that's sort of the history of um, the how this technology developed over time and people eventually got recognized as something very important to the, to the game and then developers actually tried their best to make it a lot more simpler for people. Now here we have a, um, a while back we did open up computers, sort of did some hardware with it, excuse the cows also. This is sort of me opening up the backs of these sort of um, conveyor belts and um, sort of taking a look in them, seeing how they work, just like how we did with the computers. Same thing for um, the machine or grinder here, once again, opening them up, excuse the cows, once again, and um, seeing how they work. Now I'll make a quick cut to the top part of the um, to the factory. Right, we, can con we can continue with networking. All right, we're back and we're inside the factory now in the train yard. I was relatively close by, but I never showed you guys. Um, so this the way our network works is that um, basically there's two nodes connected by one medium speaking the same language. In this case, the two nodes is this sort of um, factory here, connected by rails, which is the medium, and then the language they speak is the objects that they transport. So here we're just gonna transfer some of these, um, what's it called, books, and then we, we also got some valuables here, once again objects, and we basically just, um, oops, once again, one had recording, the best ever. The point with this is that I actually got to um, push this manually, I believe. Yeah, I gotta push it a bit. There you go. Um, let's just make sure that actually... Yeah, it should be good. For some reason, it didn't... Um, what's it called? It didn't make it last time I recorded, so I have to make sure that it actually works. Oh yeah, here's a fun thing. Another ne example of a network is um, this train station. It's similar to this, um, to that train station there, but this one's uh, more developed. This train station transports people up north to my um, other two towns, and I'll show you real quick. Here you are, and this is the sort of old train station. However, I need to repair it because after modding, this really needs to get updated to what vanilla Minecraft can actually have. But it was a, what's it called, a very fast network, connected my two cities pretty easily. Once again, the only difference between this one and that um, train station is that this one speaks a different language. In this case, it's be it um, transfers to people instead of objects, which is a different language for the network. Once again, still connecting the two nodes, still connecting with the same medium, speaks a different language though. And we'll I'll cut to an I'm well actually I'll show you a bit. I'll do a portion of swiftness so that we can get on our way faster, a lot faster. There we go. Let's just there we go. I'm just gonna zoom past here the city. I want to show the sort of connecting two cities part of this. Some things why and not um, skipping just yet. Oh well, however, during the minecart, uh, what's it called? During the minecart transportation, we're gonna cut a bit, so as we can make this a bit more faster. Okay, here we are at the train station. I'm trying to get my minecart out. 
once again, just like the uh, second trade station, this transports people and not objects. I mean, you could technically do it. You, there's nothing stopping you from doing it, but I don't like to. I don't like to do that. I believe that if what um, the railway is meant to do is supposed to be what it's meant to do. And we're just gonna cut real quick to when we get to the port town, and I'll show you what happened to that items we sent earlier. Also, with my old recordings, this is actually around the point where my computer trust turned off. Um, yeah, I don't want to speak about that. All right, and we're back. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of um, what's it called, minecarts here. This is from when I recorded before. Let's get rid of these minecarts. I can leave that one. And basically, we're about to just wrap up here. There's not much stuff to talk about. Here we are at the second city. This one I actually modified a long time ago. I'm just gonna make, we're just gonna fly so we can make it a lot faster. And there we are at the sort of port. <clears throat> and as you can see, when we enter there, we're gonna have our items. Hopefully, the combined cart actually they reach there. Instead of bouncing, oh, I see why. Okay, so those cards, um, they're also from the factory, but it seems that I made a mistake. However, you get the gist of it, it connects the two sort of factories. Um, with the same medium, speaking the same language. Yeah, and there's something wrong with it, it just bounced back. So that's my presentation, and I hope you enjoyed.